Jupiters, welcome to another edition of Vince and Josh. I'm Vince. And I'm Josh. And we're here to give you budget travel tips for some of the most exciting destinations around the world. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that sounded very formal. <laughs> so in this episode, we're going to talk about one of the most breathtaking places that we've visited. Iceland! And it's also one of my favorite destinations. But oh, yeah, guys, before we proceed, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon for instant notifications for our future uploads. So, okay, Iceland. So, most people think that Iceland is expensive. But the truth is, it is. <laughs> it is very, very expensive. Super mahal. <laughs> it is one of the most expensive countries that we visited. Mm -hmm. Like, siguro nasa top 3, mm -hmm. top 2, ganyan. Uh, kasi ano pa, nung nag-backpacking kami ng Europe, parang malaking chunk ng budget namin napunta kay Iceland. 25 to 30% ng budget namin mm -hmm. ng pang Europe namin doon siya napunta. Ganun uh, siya kamahal. And we visited more than 10 countries. Mm -hmm. Pero 30% ng budget namin napunta sa Iceland. Ganun siya kalala. But it's super worth it. Yun. So it's very expensive, that's true, but it doesn't mean that there are no ways to travel and see it on a budget. There are ways of keeping the expenses low. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna give you tips on kung paano kayo makakatipid pag mag-decide kayo na pumunta ng ice. ice land. So yun, yeah. tipid tip number one namin is... Timing is everything. So the thing with Iceland is... Um, the best time to visit depends on what you want to see. So for example, if you're visiting Iceland to see the Northern Lights, then make sure you visit between September and March. Kasi, yun yung dun visible yung Northern Lights. So, wag kayong visit ng summer or like like late spring, ganun. Kasi, hindi nyo, hindi nyo makikita yung Northern Lights. Pero, if you're in Iceland to like go around the the island yung talaga makita as many destinations sa island as you can then summer and uh summer months yung okay kasi um pagdating ng wind ng ng autumn and winter kumokonti na yung mga yung public transportation uh, services sobrang ang hirap na ang hirap na to go around the island <laughs> I'm so sorry. 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 i am which is prioritize the Northern Lights tour. The problem with the Northern Lights tour is very dependent siya on the weather. So mm -hmm. and the solar activities. Yes. So make sure you check. And basta yung kasi nasabi namin to prioritize kasi baka ihuli niyo siya sa itinerary. Tapos on your last day, hindi siya magpakita. So wala kayo. So give yourselves as many chances to see it as you can. First day pa lang ibook niyo na siya. If kakadating niyo lang dumating kayo ng mga for example mga 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock or mga lunch time, ibook niyo na siya agad that day mismo. Syempre hindi kasi every day, every night nagpapakita yung yung light. So mm -hmm. kung hindi siya magpakita that night, irerebook nila to the next night. Kung hindi pa rin, irerebook nila to the next night. Lagi lang siyang rebook ng rebook ng rebook. So, ang maganda doon is hindi naman masasayang kung hindi magpakita sa inyo. Uh -huh. Ang pangit doon is hindi nga nagpakita sa inyo. <laughs> so, based on our experience, ang nangyari sa amin is, sige, since 6 days? 6 days ba tayo doon? 7 days. Yeah, I think. Se 7 days kami sa Iceland. And then, pagdating namin doon, maaga pa para clear yung day. Pero ang ginawa namin, guys, since pagod pagod sabi ko sige bukas na lang eh bukas natin bukas natin book eh book natin today pero bukas natin siya puntahan wala kaming nakitang northern lights no. night one lang siya nagpakita pero hindi kami nag-tour ano nangyari guys 
Na-move kami ng na-move hanggang matapos yung 7 days namin sa Iceland. Night 2 to night 6 namin, hindi siya nagpakita. No. Nag-crack mo talaga siyang activity sa taas. Mm. Visibility nung no, yung solar activity. Ang problem din is yung ano, uh, weather. weather. Cloudy. Kasi super cloudy. Super cloudy nung day nung tour namin hanggang matapos yung tour namin. Paggabi talaga as in super cloudy. Tapos may mga ano pa nga eh, times na umuulan. Mm -hmm. Umuulan talaga. So wala talagang way. And sinecheck namin talaga yung mga weather doon, yung clouds. Covered yung buong ano. Iceland. So, kahit gusto na yung puntahan yung outside Lake Avic na makita yung uh, Northern Lights, wala talaga ako eh. Masa, you need a little bit of luck then. Dasal-dasal lang. Dasal talaga. <laughs> Totoo no? <laughs> so, yeah. okay ka kaya sa amin. I, I mean, kung may time kayo, take, take that chance. Na para, take nyo yung opportunity yung day na yun na para makita nyo na siya agad-agad. Para mm -hmm. after nun, para wala na kayong wawad. Diba? Tipid trip! Trip. <laughs> tip, tip, tip number three, use comparison sites to find cheap flights. So we were lucky na when we visited, meron pang Wow Air, pero ngayon kasi wala na Wow Air. So mas konti lang yung options na. If you're looking for cheap flights, use aggregator sites, flight aggregator sites like uh, Skyscanner, Kayak, then um, yun para compare. Nyo, kung ano yung I don't think there are direct flights from Manila to uh, Reykjavik. So, you're probably gonna end up making a transfer in another European city. The cheapest flights from Europe are usually coming from uh, Copenhagen and Amsterdam. Hmm. So, in our case, um, we were on a like greater European backpacking trip and Iceland wasn't our first stop so our, our entry point was Paris but we found the cheapest flights were actually coming from Amsterdam so we made sure that our stop before um, Iceland was Amsterdam just to and after our Iceland trip the next uh, destination that we visited was Copenhagen because again Amsterdam and Copenhagen usually have the cheapest flights so yeah, so that's for the flex. Mm -hmm. tip, tip number four is book accommodations in advance. Advance so, by one month. Hindi. Hindi kasi parang ano. Um, syempre, hindi naman kami makapag-book agad kasi visa dependent visa. tayo, di ba? Kung mag-book kami tapos denied. 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 Ano naman nangyayari? <laughs> Ayun, so sayang nga. Pero kami, um, kapag ka-approve ng visa namin, uh, Minik sure namin na sinikir namin agad yung mga accommodations. Yung mga natitirang accommodations sa Reykjavik at the time, they were super mahal. mahal. As in super duper duper expensive. And we can't afford, we couldn't afford any of them. So we ended up trying to find a place to stay sa Airbnb. Yung nabook namin, ay, mahal pa rin siya guys, 4,000 to 5,000 pesos per night. Yung pinakamura na kita namin dati. Tapos yung mga iba doon, yung mga remaining apartments doon na pinaparent nila aabot na mga 12,000 per night. 20,000 per night. Ganun ka mahal. When we were just planning it, yung, when it was just an idea, mm -hmm. uh, we tried searching for accommodations. We found cheap ones, pero by the time na we needed to book na for reals, <laughs> ano, <laughs> Wala, wala na, wala na yung mga ganung presyo, mas mahal talaga. So if you can book as early as you can. Uh -huh. Yeah. Isa ding tip is hanap sila ng accommodation site na parang pag pwede yung i-online reserve and then pag na-approve yung visa niya parang i-continue na siya, i-book niyo na siya. Yung mga may free cancellation para kung hindi naman ma-approve, wala kayong babayaran. Uh -huh. Kung mag-cancel. Um, tipid trip, trip, tipid. <laughs> Number five is walk when you can. So Reykjavik, yes. uh, the Reykjavik city center, or at least yung old town, uh, it's pretty small. Um, so it's easy to walk around. If you want mm -hmm. to see like uh, different attractions within the city, just walk. Yeah. So for example, if uh, the church. <laughs> hindi ko mabanggit and hindi ko ma-memorize yung pangalan. <laughs> Tongue twist. Oh, okay, magalala guys. Tongue twisters yung mga pangalan uh, ng lugar ko. Yan, and um, 
to uh, the penis museum. Yes, the May Penis Museum. And basa you can just walk around. Na hindi hindi nyo kailangan na mag mag sumakay. Just make sure that you're properly um, uh, dressed. Kasi minsan pag sobrang lamig or umambon, dapat may layers talaga kayo. Lalo na kung visit kayo ng late autumn or winter. Number six! Drive when you can! <laughs> yes, if you have a license and you can drive, drive. Drive. Most attractions sa Iceland or outside uh, the Reykjavik city center and the best way is to rent a car and drive because that would also be the cheapest especially kung group kayo because you can split the cost mm -hmm. mga attractions na to magkakalayo for example um sa Golden Circle and sa South Coast parang the hindi sila parang like one destination and then ando na lahat it's like like you're hopping from one stop to another to another to another and the great thing about Driving is you have total control of your time, mm -hmm. and mas mura nga siya kasi all you need to do is pay for the car rental uh, and um, gasoline. gasoline. Yon. Pero what about those na hindi pa rin drive or walang license? Uh, uh, travel tip number seven: um, Joy case mga group tours. Yun yung ginawa natin. Kasi hindi tayo marunong magdrive. Kasi hindi kami marunong magdrive. So. Actually, marunong pa tayong drive. Wala lang kami ng license. <laughs> Ayun, guys. So, join na lang kayo ng group tour kung hindi kayo marunong mag-drive. Mas marami rin kayong matututunan uh, kasi syempre yung, mm -hmm. yung guide nyo, who is also your driver, uh, can share information about each stop. Hindi siya katulad ng if you're on your own, wala kayong kasama, walang nagbibigay sa inyo ng, walang insider, mm -hmm. kumbaga. Yung mga nadadaanan ninyo na places na para oh, may ano pala yun, para paano siya na form, Ano ba yung historical ano nito, historical significant? Next spring siya sa inyo para. Oh, interesting para may additional insights. Kayo. Oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Di ba? laughs> yung con naman niya is wala talaga kayong control dun sa time. So, may mga stops kami na parang like we only have 15 minutes or 30 minutes sa isang stop tapos tumatakbo talaga kami. Uh -huh. Just to make sure na hindi kami maiwan ng bus. Hindi kami maiwan yung bus or hindi kami yung maging cost, cost ng, ng delay. delay For example, sa Gulf Oz, parang 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Eh, ang layo nun. So, talagang tumatakbo talaga kami. Number 8. Bring a reusable water bottle. Uh, Yun. Bakit? Yung tap water sa Iceland ay potable. Pwede siyang drink. Pwede siyang inumin. Drinkable yung yung uh, tap water sa Iceland. So, hindi nyo kailangan bumili ng uh, bottled water na mahal din yun eh sa, sa convenience store, sa ganyan. In fact, nung nandun kami, sa bumibili, ka ng, bumibili kami ng like 2 liters ba yun na uh, bottled water sa convenience store sa Reykjavik. And then, yung cashier, um, guys, you know that water here is drinkable, right? Tapos sabi namin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kaya na hindi na nun talaga namin. <laughs> sabi niya, because you know, I think it's just fair that before you buy this, I tell you, you may not have a need for this. <laughs> but we said, okay, binili na lang din ako. Pero, yun, so, pwede nyo namin ang tap water sa Iceland. It's just a matter of taste. If you're on a budget, you don't need to purchase water. You can just drink the water that comes from the tap. Kasi hindi naman sa market yung channel namin, guys. Ako, nakalamin naman ako ng tubig na ininom mm -hmm. from sa gripo nila. Oh. Eh, ako sensitive yung channel. So, parang, hindi naman sa market yung channel ko. Kaya, why lang? So, yun. It's also great to have your own uh, water bottle para when you join a group tour or you you drive around, you can refill, refill nyo na lang uh -huh. from, from kung saan. Number nine, hit the supermarket. So, again, one of the first things that we love doing on our first day whenever we visit a new destination is to visit the supermarket. Um, supermarket. Um, we do it for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, just to have a sense of how expensive or how cheap that destination is. This, you know, because you can see the prices. How much is the, the bread? How much is the an apple? You, para, you know, you have an idea how cheap it is or how expensive it is. And, 
in the case of Iceland. Uh, and number two is so you can purchase supplies that uh, for the for the rest of your stay. So, for example, coming events we don't eat out all the time. So, uh, breakfast we never have breakfast outside. So we just buy something from the supermarket or from the grocery. And then, you know, breakfast na men, dito lang kami. Ng noodles, bread, bread, and palaman. palaman. <laughs> ganun, ganun lang kami parate. So, um, may supermarket and then um, may grocery and then may may convenience store. So, if wala talaga kayong time or wala kayong energy na magpunta ng um, bigger grocery uh, stores, then pwede naman yung convenience okay. stores. Mas mahal ng konti, but it's still a lot cheaper than if you eat outside sa restaurant. And speaking of restaurants, number 10, if you must eat out, do so for lunch. Because in general, in Europe, lunches are cheaper than dinner. Sometimes even the same dish, if they're served kapag dinner, mas mahal sila. Kahit na same, same lang naman sila. Oh, Pagpagat no? dessert lang siguro yung pinakaiba. <laughs> no. Misin nga wala eh, wala at all. In the first place, during lunchtime, you're probably outside anyway because you're exploring. You're out exploring, so you might as well um, eat at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to eat out, then lunch talaga. So kami events since we're outside exploring, lunch kami kumakain sa labas. Tapos yung dinner namin, kinakain na lang namin kung ano yung binili namin from the supermarket. So some of the um, cheap but really really good restaurants in Reykjavik are um, Messin. I think it's one of the best meals we've had in the whole Europe trip. Namin. Uh, we ordered Arctic char and um, smoked salmon open face sandwich. sandwich. Second is Kruvatai. It's an Asian restaurant um, in the city center. It's more than that. So, um, it's about 1,500 to 1,700 lang per, per dish. And 1,700 uh, Icelandic krona per dish. So, that's roughly around like 600, 700 pesos, but mahal na siya sa atin, pero sa mundo nila doon, sobrang mura na, kasi um, most other restaurants are really, really expensive. Tsaka guys, ano doon, tawag dito, uh, malaking serving, as in, good for two, three, for example, mm -hmm. serving. Yeah. For example, yung Arctic char na in-order ko sa Mesin, it has three huge chunks of fish, mm -hmm. so, talagang hindi siya pang isang tao talaga and yung kasa yung host nga namin parang sinasabi niya they rarely eat out they rarely eat, but when when they do um they share kasi they malaki share talaga sila kasi malaki yung serving kasi for example kami dalawa tat tatlo pang in order namin tat tatlo ba dalawa dalawa yung dalawa in order namin na yon parang as in, in kundi lang namin iniisip, kundi lang kami nag-convert at that, that time. Sige, so, iisipin na, sasabihin namin na, sige, okay na yun, pero hindi, nag-convert kami pa. Ang mahal, sige, upusin na lang natin. Eh, mm -hmm. Pero kasi, masarap. Super sarap. Uh, masarap talaga. And, um, um, when you join group tours, meron din mga lunch stops. So, pwede kayong kumain doon, pero yun nga, mahal kasi in general yung pagkain sa, sa Iceland. So, um, don't feel obliged na kumain dun sa lunch stops. In fact, many travelers, they just bring yung mga pinamili nila from the convenience store convenience or supermarket. Store. Like, may dala silang saging or ap may apple. apple or bread or gumawa sila ng sandwich sa, sa apartment. Uh, oh, tapos, dala lang nila. Dala lang nila. Kasi, um, sa, sa lunch stops naman, uh, merong mga benches or tables outside na uh, public naman yun for public uh, use. So, ang ginagawa lang nila, doon na lang nila kinakain yung... Uh, pero if, if you want to eat out kami, naghahati na lang kami. Uh, <laughs> soup lang naman. For example, yung isang tour na, yung isang stop namin, that lunch stop. Hindi naman talaga kayo obligado na kailangan doon kayo pumain, doon kayo bumili. Ganyan. Hindi. Kami bumili lang kami ng soup, tapos hati na kami. Then, hmm, kasi malaki nga siya. Oh, okay na. Malang, tapos may baon na lang din kami ng mga tinapay. Hmm. Yun, tapos tubig, okay na. Yeah. And okay mahiya, okay mahiya. Uh, one more thing, tipping is not practiced in um, Iceland. So it's not mandatory to tip. Uh, according to our host, um, sila, my friends, uh, locals don't normally tip. So they don't see any reason why tourists should. Pero sabi rin nila, if, if you really feel like uh, tipping because the service is good, it's really good, 
Um, then, pwede naman, go lang. Parang feel free. Pero, it's not mandatory. Yan. Ito naman. That's it! Those are the 10 tipid travel tips that we can give you about Iceland. And now that it's over, it's time to put our ref magnet sa ating mahiwagang ref. So in case you're wondering bakit nandito tayo sa kusina, katabi namin yung ref kasi one of our collections kapag nagtatravel kami ay ref magnet dahil mura lang. So, ito. So ilalagay na natin siya. Pandagdag sa collection. So every time we visit, dadagdag namin dyan sa mahiwagang ref natin. If you need more information, you can check out the links in the description. Lalagay namin dyan lahat yung mga links papunta sa mga blog posts namin where we documented our trip and we uh, have like a lot more information about Iceland travel. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions, just use the comment section below. Libre lang ang comment Just be nice. And ano din, try namin sagutin yung mga comments niyo, yung mga tanong niyo sa comment section. Yeah. And then if you have any suggestions on the next destination na gusto niyo i-cover namin, uh, ayun, comment lang kayo and then mali niyo sa next video namin or sa mga future videos namin. Yun na yung i-feature namin. Yeah. Yes. Please don't forget to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and hitting the bell icon para sa instant notification ng mga future uploads namin. Yeah. I'm Vince and I'm Yosh. And wherever you are in the world right now, may the ghost be, be with, with you. you. Bye.